Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I made last year and I think the year before that. And well, you know, I do the every transfer window. Um, and since Sunderland aren't playing until Monday night, I thought I would do it this video now because it just made sense to do one. Basically what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be taking a look at Sunderland's transfer business in the summer window and just give my overall thoughts um, about it. Um, you know, th th this one's going to be a little bit different just because like, like a lot of our incomings have been a lot of unknowns. I'm, also, if you catch me looking up this, I've got the Red and Stoke game on as well at the minute. Um, so yeah, like a lot of Sunderland players who they brought in this year, a lot of unknowns because we don't really know much about them. Simply enough. But I'm going to start with the outgoings first, just because I you know it is a shorter list. So we did have five contract expirations, which are the all only like permanent transfers out because we didn't we didn't actually sell anybody in this window, which is unusual because like we do usually sell at least some players, but like no players were sold in this window, which is uh, definitely different for Sunderland. Obviously, McGeady. I mean, it was the right time for them for them to move on. You know, five years at the club. Great servant for us, one of our one of the one of our best players throughout the league one year, especially especially in our first show in the Jack Ross and when he was brought back by Lee Johnson, definitely was a force to, to be reckoned with. But in, you know, in his last season, just didn't look the same, wasn't fit, ridiculed with injury, he was put his hand to move on. Will Grigg, the complete opposite of McGeady, to say the least, just a fucking hideous, hideous signing. Like literally it was well documented. That signing on Sunday until I die. Yeah, literally, the most expensive player in League One history proved to be the biggest waste of money because I don't even I don't even think he got double digits for us in the end. After he was playing for like three years, he played for us for like two and a half years. It's just awful, terrible. Lee Burge as well. I mean, wasn't wasn't completely terrible, but like you know, like that that season behind closed doors, he was in the team of the season somehow. Um, but you know, you can't really uh. Like, like, like he, he did his best, but yeah, I think it was just time, time, time for the go. So, Madgley, again, first year was out through injury. Second year, didn't, wasn't really given the chance. Had a brief spell um, back in February, March, but then soon he made one calamity error because never seen again. Which is unfortunate, but again, you know, moving up into a into a harder league, can't really be holding on to his players. And finally, Jordan Willis. Definitely... Definitely more, def definitely like, probably the more ups upsetting one on this list, I'd say, you know. Um, first came in, brilliant addition, you know, company fans laughed at us a lot, but, you know, he, he was a good addition, you know, but he's rock solid at the back. Then, unfortunately, got a really bad injury, was brought back way too early, which then, which then made the injury worse, didn't appear at all last season. And clearly, the f club thought he was, um, he'd recovered enough to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be able to go out on his own. But you know, Willis again for the first season where he was here, he was a rock at the back. You know, and, and, and him and him and Bailey Wright under Phil Parkinson were a fucking rock solid partnership. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you. I'm, to be fair, like I'm, 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 I'm surprised I haven't found the League One club. He definitely could do a job in League One still. I'm guessing, the, I guess no one just didn't want to take a chance on them. But hopefully, I hope, I hope, I hope he finds a club again soon. And then the two, the two loan outgoings definitely was the. One you'd expect, you know, Jack Diamond going out on loan this time to Lincoln, and um, so he was playing League One football. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like if, if this lad's gonna, gonna have any fucking future at Sunderland, he has. He's got to fucking prove himself this season, in my opinion. Because like, yeah, it's fair enough. He, like he's been doing well with Harrogate in the in the National League and League Two, but like, you know, you've you've got to make that next step up. And you know, I think Lincoln's a perfect opportunity for him. Albeit Lincoln have not the best of starts to the season, but hopefully he can uh, get stuck in there. And then one, Carl Winchester did join Shrewsbury on deadline day. Um, again, this is expected. hasn't featured at all in the in the whole squad this season. You know, he's had a little bit of a problem with an injury. Like that, that must have cleared up because obviously he was able to complete his move to Shrewsbury. And again, you know, great play. You know, did did, did very well last season when needed to needed to. But then obviously he hasn't had a sniff so far this season. So I think it was probably made sense for him to. Um, go out on loan but again. Typical Shrewsbury have got a really good graft there. You know, can, again, can play in the field, can play as a right back, can even play as a fucking centre back if you really want them to. But you know, he 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 did he did a good job, and you know, was, he, I think he'll do really well there. Obviously, yeah, I think the one um, outgoing which didn't happen, which I think shocked a lot of people, was Jamie Teddy on loan. Obviously, I think it was pretty. 
Okay, that Mateti wasn't really gonna be in Alex Neal or Tony Morby's plans this season, and and it did look like he would be going out on loan to League One club. You know, Ipswich in looking at him again. Obviously, they thought they were gonna get him last in January, but obviously came us instead. Portsmouth were rumored to be interested as well, but you know, nothing happened, so he is staying at Sunderland for now. To be fair, I hope, I hope, I hope, he, I hope he gets a chance. Cause like he, he came on against Sheffield United for a substitute appearance and did pretty, pretty, he did pretty well. To be honest, and, and, and albeit against Stoke, he didn't do as well. I'm, you know, I'm sure you know as a as a substitute option, it's not bad to have. And to be fair, I wouldn't. I, I like the fact that you know, that we do have another midfielder. Obviously, we brought in Mishu and Bar. I'll talk about later, but it's nice to have some uh, depth in, in midfield, especially in the Championship. But now we're going to be moving on to the players who came in. Um, first of all, Dan Ballard was the first one came in through. You know, this one looked like it might not happen because it, because it looked like he was going to join Burnley, but then Burnley then went with somebody else. So then we then swooped in for him. And to be fair, like what a signing! I mean, to be fair, like did you have a time? I was saying this, that does a statement signing for a new promoter club. And to be fair, in his first few games where he was in the club, he did really well. And then, but unfortunately. Got injured against QPR, and then was going to be out for a couple of months, which is a huge shame because he was one of the best of the best defenders in the, in the league last season for Millwall. Um, but he's he's probably going to be out probably till about October, which is a big shame. Jack Clark signed in permanently from Tottenham for I think I think four million up front, but obviously add-ons. Um, to like that you know to be fair, Clark like good start of the season, had a fantastic game against Rotherham. But like to be fair, like like, like those games against Norwich and. Keep your stick in my head a little bit. To be fair, I, I think with Clark, you know, he, he needs to keep it up. You know, like literally, like the game against Rotherham was shown. He's he's a good player, but uh, you know, he needs to keep it up. Adji Alisi was next. This one was literally out of the blue. Like literally, like nobody even knew it happened. Like there's no rumors of anything. Like literally, first we heard of it was the announcement from the club, which is um, it's, it's nice because you, you know, like obviously all the clubs like rumors, stuff like that. You know, transfers are really. Like it's, it's very rare to find a transfer which just happens like that, and this one was one of those examples. And to be fair, although he hasn't appeared much, like I, like I think his only appearance so far was in the cup game against Sheffield Wednesday, where he didn't have the best of games. But then again, neither did anyone who played that in that game apart from Jack Diamond. Um, yeah, like 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 looking at stuff from West Ham on the under twenty ones last season, he looks like a fucking unreal defender, but hasn't um hasn't really had a chance so far this season. And I mean, to be fair, like 09, like he's he's doing well in defence. But you know, I think it's kind of alarming that 09 is getting head up, heads up against over Elisa. But who knows? Maybe Morbury will favour him. My favourite Bailey Wright as well. Who knows what Morbury's going to do? Alex Bass was next. You know, definitely like be off, like it was like it was no surprise that we needed another goalkeeper because because like, 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 other than Patterson, our next best goalkeeper was really Jacob Carney, who you know like he's like he's. Like, like it's not bad for for um doing the twenty ones, but like we needed a fucking experienced goalkeeper. But and then you know talks John Ruddy was linked, um Vito Manoni on deadline they were linked as well. Them two both went to other teams, um and then got Alex Bass, which definitely was a weird, it was it was, it was an inter- interesting one that one because he spent last season alone at Northampton or Swindon. It was one of those two in League Two. No, no, sorry, Bradford. Was Bradford, I think it was. Bradford was it, was it Bradford or Northampton? Where the fuck was he? At? I think it was Northampton. He was at last season. Didn't, didn't have the best best of times. Portsmouth fans were a little bit confused as to how he managed to get the gig or something. But you know, he's here. I mean, to be fair, again, like like Elise here, this fucking Sheffield Wednesday game wasn't his finest hour. Um, and to be fair, I, th- I think like I would, I'm, I'm, on behalf of all Sunderland fans, we probably would have liked a more like older goalkeeper. That's back up for Patterson, but you know, gotta do what we've gotta do. And uh, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I'm gonna back the lad. Because you'd be fucking stupid not to. Ellis Sims, our first loan signing, and to be fair, got off to the perfect start. You know, a brace on his debut against Bristol City. Then got scored another one against um, QPR, but then since then, has been a little bit dry for goals. I mean, to be fair, like Ross Stewart's kind of taken over from him a little bit, which I think is fine, because you know, if you've got two strikers who are. If, if at least one of them is one, fine, but. Yeah, Sims. I mean, to be fair, like so far, like he's he's, he's been scoring goals. Like, 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 he's a good finisher, but other than that, he's, he's a little bit fucking shit. At everything else, which is weird because he, like, I think that the way you describe him probably would be he's he's probably the best and worst fucking player we've got at the club. Cause, like, obviously, again, finishing top notch. Everything else, he's pretty crap. 
But you know, again, so like it does. Hopefully, he finds his, um, his feet again soon. And then this was, and, and then after Sims, there was a quite, there was, there was a long, a long gap about any signings, which is um, unusual. Um, but then I think that like literally like 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 the day before fucking Alex Neal left, Jason Bennett was finally announced. You know, like that one had been in the market for a while because obviously he's well documented. That's obviously his um. Yeah, I had trouble with their work permits. Um, again, took just took a while to get over to the country as well. So yeah, he he finally arrived. Um, again, a really unknown quantity. Literally, I feel like literally all would know is that he was the youngest ever player to be capped for the Costa Rica national team, and does have six caps for them. So he's clearly he's clearly worth something if he's fucking playing for his for his fucking national team. Who are going to be at the World Cup in November? So you know he must be all right. And then Edward Mushu was next, also on loan, well initially on loan, but obviously with a um, option to buy, which, which I think we'll probably will initiate. Again, this one was fucking mental because this came out of nowhere. It didn't really look like it was going to materialise, and then and then fucking Alex Neal left, and then everything went to shit. PSG tried to include some fucking dodgy deals in the contract, which we then told them to piss off, basically. And then and then he arrived on the Wednesday morning before Rotherham, so that was nice. And then Abdullah Bar, literally first for heard of this news was the fact that we had a 1 million euro bid except the buy Le Havre who would have seen Academy who brought up the likes of Angola Cante, Ariad Mahrez, people like that, so it's a big, solid academy. Um, and yeah, and then he was announced during half time of the Rotherham game. Um, and then, then Amad Diallo, which had been, it had been rumoured for quite a while at this point, but it didn't really look like it was going to materialise because, because obviously, and um, it was rumoured that, you know, he, like, or, like other, like, better um, championship, championship teams want them as well, like cl- like clubs in Europe want them as well. So it it, it looked like we're just gonna waste, waste our time, but no, he actually ended up signing for us on launch as a again like Dan Ballard and Jack Clark, just massive like statement signings. Edouard Mishu as well, statement signings. Like like super like, like we made some like like for fucking newly newly promoted team in the championship, we made some fucking good signings. I think. And again, I'm a Diallo didn't get much against 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 the Rangers last season. Three goals, the only um, manager. Hopefully, he'll be given he'll, he'll, he'll be given more time. At Sunderland, where he can progress because it, like it's been coming come up to fucking nearly two years since Man, Man United bought him. And uh, yeah, hopefully he um, has a has a has a good time up here. But guys, it's gonna be it for this video. Um, again, just a little quick round up of our signings. Just you know something I do every single window. Please let me know down below in the comments what you guys thought of our signings. Which do you think that we should have brought anyone else in? Did we do enough? Did we, did we do the kind of things? Just again, let me know down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.